hi welcome back to hibernate tutorial so in this lesson we will learn the basic concepts of hibernate and the architecture of hibernate and we will see the benefits of hibernate and also we will have a look into uh, you know benefits of hibernate over jdbc all right so this lesson uh, uh, you know contains a theoretical theoretical concepts so just stick with me in further lessons we are going to learn a lot about hibernate coding examples all right so in this lesson we will have a look into uh, the hibernate basic concepts core components architecture benefits benefits for jdbc a lot of things all right let's get started hibernate is one of the most widely used java orm tool most of the applications uses relational database to store application information and at the low level, we use JDBC API for connecting to the database and for form code operations. All right. So if you look at the JDBC code, uh, we need to write a lot of boilerplate code over there. For example, we need to establish a connection with a relational database. Then we write. We need to write a SQL statements. We need to execute the SQL statements using JDBC API, and we need to iterate over a result set. And we need to you know close the resources so there are a lot of binder plate code we need to write all right for each operation and there may be chances of resource leakage or a data inconsistency because all the work needs to be done by the developer all right so this is where a ORM tool comes handy now let's have a look into what is a ORM so ORM stands for object relational mapping all right, and it's a programming technique to map application domain model objects to the relational database tables and vice versa. So we can use ORM to directly map our application domain model objects to the relational database tables. So I will explain you what is a ORM and how it works with an example in further lessons. All right, and let's have a look into what is a JPA. So JPA stands for Java Persistent API. And it is a Java standard for mapping Java objects to the relational database. All right, so JP is a just a specification, and it has several implementations, uh, like uh, for example, Hibernate, Eclipse Link, and Apache Open JPA. So remember, JP is just a specification. It exposes the APIs, and there are several implementations are available. For popular implementations are Hibernate, Eclipse Link, Apache Open JPA, and all right so jp specifications are defined with annotations in java x dot persistent package all right and using jp annotation helps us in writing implementation independent code for example if you are using a uh, hibernate in your application then you can replace hibernate to hibernate with eclipse link because jp you know it is a specification so it helps us in writing implementation independent code all right now let's have a look into what is a hibernate so hibernate is a java based ORM tool that provides a framework for mapping application domain objects to the relational database tables and vice versa all right and hibernate provides a reference implementation of the jpa that makes it a great choice as a ORM tool with the benefits of loose coupling all right so here you can see this is a diagram it has uh, here it has a uh, you know student java class and uh, here it has a uh, you know student uh, database table and hibernate is a ORM mapping that maps a domain object to the listener table all right so it will directly map student domain object to the student database table let's have a look into the hibernate architecture so look at the diagram here so Hibernate sits between Java application and database. So Java application uses Hibernate APIs in order to perform a database operations uh, with a database. All right. So notice here, these are the core components of Hibernate and uh, we'll be having a look into all these core components. All right. So first is a configuration. So we generally write a configuration in hibernate.properties or hibernate.x you know, uh, configuration.xml file. For Java based configurations, so you may find a class annotated with add configuration class. Alright. 
and configuration is used by session factory to work with the java application in the database all right so second is a session factory so session factory uh, you know uh, is a uh, you know thread safe and it represents a mapping of domain model objects to the database and it, it acts as a factory for session objects all right and, and session factory is very expensive to create so for any given database the application should have only one associated session factory so make sure that you should maintain a single session factory object for a single database and the session factory you know uh, it's a thread shape and immutable so you should uh, make it as a single turn whenever you use the you know session factory in your application and uh, i will see how to use a session factory and how to create a session object by using session factory with an example in further lessons just remember session factory is a thread shape and it provides a factory of session object and uh, session factory provides a second level cache all right so now the session so session is a single threaded uh, short lived object so which we use session to communicate with the database and behind the scenes uh, hibernate session wraps a jdbc connection object and it acts as a factory for connection uh, transaction object so we'll see how to use a session and uh, you know how to use session methods to communicate to the database so just remember session is a you know short lived short lived and single threaded object and behind the scenes the session, hibernate session wraps a jdbc connection object and session object provides a factory of transaction objects all right now transaction so transaction is also a single threaded short lived object and we can use uh, to perform a transaction within that particular database operation and now the query so hibernate allows applications to query the database for one or more stored objects so hibernate provides different techniques to query database including named query and criteria API all right and the first level cache so it represents the default cache used by the hibernate session object while interacting interacting with the database and it is also called a session cache all right so one thing you need, you need to remember first level cache is available with the session object until the session object is live all right and once the session object is destroyed then first level cache is also destroyed all right and uh, persistent objects so persistent objects are POJOs which get persisted as one of the rows in a relational table in a database by the hibernate all right and they are compared in a configuration files or annotated with add entity annotation i'll show you how to create a persistent class or a gp entity in a hibernate application we'll see in a further sections with an example all right so second level cache so second level cache is used to store objects across sessions and session level cache is associated with the session factory all right uh, you know, by default session factory is disabled uh, second level cache is disabled so you need to enable session, second level cache and one of the most common sessions second level cache provider is eh cache Alright, so we need to explicitly enable the second level cache and we need to provide a cache provider for second level cache. Alright, so these are the core, core components of Hibernate. Alright, so so far we had a look into what is a Hibernate and Hibernate architecture. Now let's have a look into what are the important benefits of Hibernate framework. All right. So Hibernate eliminates all the boilerplate code that comes with the JDBC and take care of managing resources. So we can just focus on writing the business logic. All right. And Hibernate framework provides a support for XML as well as JPA uh, annotations that makes our code implementation independent. All right. And Hibernate provides a powerful uh, HQ HQL query that is a Hibernate query language that is similar to SQL. However, uh, Hibernate query language is fully object oriented and understands the concepts like inheritance, polymorphism, and association. So, yeah, so Hibernate query language is you know one of the you know best benefit or feature provided by Hibernate uh, to write a, a database independent you know queries. All right. 
So Hibernate is easy to integrate with other, uh, you know, Java, Java, Java W frameworks. So it is so popular that Spring framework provides a built-in support for integrating Hibernate with the Spring applications. All right. And Hibernate supports, uh, you know, lazy initialization using FrogJ objects and it performs actual database queries only when it's required. All right. So again, I know Hibernate Cache helps us in getting a better performance. So if you can remember, Hibernate provides a post level cache and second level cache. So we can use these caches to boost the application performance. All right. And uh, Hibernate provides, uh, you know, database vendor specific features. And, you know, Hibernate is suitable because uh, we can also execute a native SQL queries as well as Hibernate provides HQL uh, feature so we can use HQL. So there are uh, different, uh, you know, uh, query strategy Hibernate provides like name, named queries, criteria API. All right, so we can get a benefit of these, you know, these queries and we can also, you know, we can, we can just have, we can just utilize these Hibernate features. All right. So overall, Hibernate is a best choice in a current market for ORM tool. It it contains all the features that you will you will ever need in a ORM tool. All right. So these are the important benefits of Hibernate. Now, uh, now what are the advantages of Hibernate over JDBC? All right. So here are the, some of the important advantages of Hibernate over JDBC. So the first is Hibernate removes a lot of boilerplate code that comes with the JDBC API and the code looks cleaner and readable. All right. And Hibernate supports inheritance association and collections. So these features are not present in a JDBC API. All right. So Hibernate implement, impl, impl, implicitly provides a transaction management. In fact, most of the queries can't be executed outside a transaction. So in, in case of JDBC API, we need to write a code for transaction management using commit and rollback APIs. All right, and JDBC API throws SQL exception that is a checked exception. So we need to write a lot of try try catch block code in order to you know handle the you know exception in case of JDBC. All right, so most of the times it's a redundant 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 in every JDBC call and used by the transaction management. So Hibernate wraps JDBC exceptions and throws JDBC uh, exception or a Hibernate exception. All right, so we don't need to write a code to handle it. So Hibernate built-in transaction management removes the usage of try try clutch blocks. All right. And one more thing is Hibernate query language is a most oriented, you know, more object oriented and close to the Java programming language. So for JDBC, we need to write a native SQL queries. All right. And a Hibernate supports a caching that is better for the performance. So JDBC queries are not cached, hence performance is low. All right. And a Hibernate provides an option through which we can create a database tables too for JDBC tables must exist in the database. So in Hibernate provides, uh, you know, D, uh, DDL, DDL2, HBM2 DDL property through which we can create uh, tables automatically. But in case of JDBC, we need to manually create tables in a database. Uh, and the Hibernate configuration helps, helps us in using JDBC-like connection as well as GNDI data source for the connection flow. So this is an important feature in enterprise application and completely missing in JDBC API. Right? And Hibernate supports the GP annotations. So the code is independent of implementation and is easily replaceable with other ORM tools. So JDBC code is very tightly coupled with the application. Right? So these are the benefits of Hibernate over JDBC. Okay, all right, so let me summarize what are the things we have learned so far. So we have we have discussed so what is a ORM, what is a JPA, what is a Hibernate and Hibernate architecture, Hibernate core components, benefits of using Hibernate and using benefits of using Hibernate over JDBC. All right, now let's have a look into Hibernate examples. All right, so moving forward, we learn a lot about Hibernate with examples and we will have a hands-on experience on using Hibernate framework, all right? So typically we can create a Hibernate application using either XML-based configuration, 
or either we can use also a Java based compilation. All right. So I would like to show you both the way uh, by creating two examples. So first example, I will create a Hibernate application using XML based compilation. And in the second example, I will show you how to use a Hibernate using Java based compilation. All right. And we use MySQL database in order to, you know, uh, can, uh, in order to connect with that, in order to store a data into a database. So first we will see how to use, how to create a Hibernate application using XML based compilation. So basically Hibernate provides a hibernate.config.xml file where we define all the Hibernate database related configurations as well as um, Hibernate mapping uh, configuration. All right. So let's have a look into what are the tools and technology that we'll be using. So we'll be using Hibernate 5 plus, uh, we will use, uh, we'll be using uh, Eclipse IDE and we will use, uh, we'll be using Marvin, uh, as a project management and build tool, I will be using Java 1.8 and we will we use a uh, mask uh, 8 plus. All right. And let's have a look into what are the de development steps that we are, you know, following in order to create a Hibernate application using XML based compilation. So first we create a simple mind project in Eclipse ID. We add the project structure to it. And then uh, we add all the jar dependencies to Pomerot XML and uh, we create a jp entity all right and we define a hibernate configuration in a hibernate.config.xml file and uh, we also create a hibernate utility class which provides a single transition factory object and finally uh, we create a main class and uh, we you know test the hibernate application perfect now let's open Eclipse ID. So I am in Eclipse ID. So let's create a simple Marvin project. Go to the file new. Uh, if you don't find Marvin here, just search for Marvin. Here we go. And just select Marvin project. I choose next. Let's give group ID as net.java guides. And artifact ID as a hibernate. I know I have a Hibernate XML config example. All right, let's give a name and description for this project. So you can give a name as a Hibernate XML config example, and you can give a description also. So once you are happy with the details, just uh, hit finish button. So here we go. We have created a simple Marvin project in Eclipse ID. Now, if you can notice here, uh, by default, uh, Java 1.5 is associated with this newly created project. So let's go ahead and let's change the Java version. So go to the build path and let's change uh, JDK Java uh, version from 1.5 to JDK 1.8. And let's change Java compiler version as well. By default, it is 1.5. Now let us change it to 1.8. Perfect. Cool, right? Now uh, let's add a uh, Marvin dependencies. So basically, uh, we are using MySQL database. So first, we need to add a, a MySQL connector dependency, and we add a Hibernate core dependency. All right. So notice here we are we have added a MySQL connector, and here we we have, we have added you know Hibernate core dependency. So these are the two dependencies are enough in order to create a Hibernate application and connect to MySQL database. All right. So next step is, so let me list, let me go through the step by step. So we have created a simple project and we have, uh, now we need to, you know, uh, add a project structure to our application. Let's go to the package and let's create a package and name it as a net.javaguides.hibernate dot model so let's create one more package new package dao all right let's create one more package and name it as a util perfect now we have created a project structure let us see what is the next step so we have added already i you know our jar dependencies let's have a look into it so here you can see all right let's have a look into next step 
uh, next step is we need to create a simple jp entity all right let's go to the uh, model package right click and create a class name it as a student all right so this is a student class now let's create a few of the fields like uh, you can also create a you can long id or int id all right private string post name private string last name private string email all right simple now uh, let's create a getter setter methods so in order to access private methods uh, private uh, fields we need to create a getter setters here and although hibernate uh, internally uses getter setters methods in order to deal with the proxy objects all right let's create a parameterized constructor all right and let's also create a default constructor perfect now uh, our uh, you know we have created a java class with the getter shuttle methods and uh, constructors all right let's make this uh, java class as a jpa entity let's use the jpa annotations here so let's type at the rate entity annotation so at entity annotation we used to basically you know make this student class as a jpa entity let's let's give a you know name table name to this entity I uh, use add table annotation in order to provide a table name to this entity so basically we are mapping uh, you know uh, this uh, jpa domain entity to the to the relational ta table right and let's create a primary key so in order to create a primary key let's use add uh, id annotation and let's also define a primary key generation strategy over here so we use at the rate gen, uh, you know, generated value annotation in order to provide a primary key generation strategy. All right. Let's also you know provide a column names for these uh, you know uh, fields. So we use at column annotation in order to provide a column name here. So if you don't specify uh, you know this annotation then by default the uh, the name of the column uh, will be the name of uh, you know uh, uh, java uh, field uh, that is the instance variable perfect now next step is we need to create a hibernate configuration so we will be using xml based configuration that's why we need to create a xml file over here so by conventionally it should be a hibernate.cfg.xml file because the hibernate internally uses the same name all right let's type hibernate.cfg.xml so this is the standard name uh, we use in order to define hibernate configurations all right so basically the hibernate configuration file contains a session factory object all right so basically we define database uh, related uh, you know credentials and you know hibernate mapping details so here you can see uh, these are the database related configurations and we provide a hibernate properties and also we provide a you know uh, connection full details uh, so here you can see this is these are the uh, you know database related Details like driver, JDBC, URL, username, password, and below you can find these are the Hibernate properties, and we need to specify you know uh, dialect, MySQL dialect over here, and uh, these are the connection full and where you can notice here, uh, here we have defined a mapping. All right, we need to define a mapping over here. Mapping uh, in the sense uh, we need to uh, we need to map a uh, JP entity. Uh, in a hibernate configuration class perfect right so these are the few details we need to provide in order to work with hibernate so we are using mysql database all right so let's create a hibernate util class so basically we, we create this class in order to you know create a session factory object as a you know singleton so so the, uh, typically there should be only one session factory object for each uh, database 
so even you can define multiple session factories uh, but uh, there there should be a single session factory object for sing, uh, for that particular database if you are pointing to multiple databases then you can use a multiple session factory objects so you notice here uh, we are using we are maintaining a session factory or uh, object as a singleton and you can also you know, specify this hibernate.config.xml uh, file name uh, here also but by default hibernate will pick that that file from the class path itself and here you can see here we are using metadata object and uh, we are building session factory and we are retaining session factory object for you pretty simple just uh, right let's create a All right. So now uh, let's create a class and name it as an app. So we'll create this class uh, in a root package. Now we use this class in order to test our Hibernate application, right? So let's create a main method. Uh, we run this application as a standalone. Uh, let's create a student object student student equal to new student all right uh, so let me change the parameters constructor here so just remove id because uh, we are at one, at one incrementing uh, the primary key so so here let us fill up the details like post name equal to ramesh last name equal to furthery and just type email as ramesh at the red gmail.com perfect all right so this is a simple student object now we are going to save the student object into a listener database table all right so let's create again let's create a session or object over here so session object is uh, you know just uh, a short lived uh, object it internally or behind the scenes it internally uses connection object itself so let's get a session factory object from hibernate util class and uh, let's call open session object so notice that uh, we are using try with resource statement in order to automatically close the session object over here so otherwise you need to use a use a finally block in order to close the session object right so we'll be using uh, try with resource statement in order to automatically close the session object so notice here we are uh, uh, we are using transaction over here so in order to start the transaction you need to call begin transaction method on session object once once we start the transaction then we can uh, save object that is a student object in this particular transaction once we save the or once we persist a student object into a database then we can commit the transaction transaction dot commit perfect right so very simple steps we need to uh, start the transaction we need to perform our database operation then we can commit the transaction notice here uh, if we have encountered any uh, exception within a try block then we can we can catch that exception and we can just roll back the transaction all right so here is the code transaction dot roll back perfect very simple right Now let's go ahead and let's run this application and let's see. All right, just right, right click run as Java application. So here we go. Notice here a couple of uh, SQL state statements printed by Hibernate itself. So, so here you can see we have created and we have inserted a student entity. Perfect, right? So this is how typically we configure Hibernate application using XML based configuration. We define all the Hibernate, all the database and uh, mapping. Uh, configurations in hibernate.config.xml file all right so in the next uh, video i will show you how to use a javascript configuration perfect thanks for watching i will see you in the next video subscribe to my youtube channel thank you hi there welcome back to hibernate tutorial series so in my previous video i have shown you how to create a hibernate application uh, using xml based configuration
all right and in this video tutorial i'm going to show you how to create a hibernate application using java's configuration so we basically define a database and mapping details in hibernate configurations all right let's have a look into what are the tools and technologies that we'll be using so we'll use hibernate 5 plus and we use eclipse as an id to develop hibernate application and we use maven and uh, java 1.8 and we will be using mysql database all right so let's have a look into what are the development tools that we are going to implement so first uh, we create a simple Maven project and we add a project structure to it and then uh, we basically create we add all the maven dependencies to pom.xml and we create a simple jp entity and then we create a hibernate configuration class using you know java based configuration and we create a hibernate utility class which provides a session factory object and finally we create a main class and we run hibernate application as a standalone and we'll see the demo all right so let's let's implement these steps so the first step is we need to create a simple mine project all right let's open eclipse id and let's create a simple mine project so i am in eclipse id so if you can notice here in my previous video i have shown you how to create a hibernate application using xml based configuration so this is xml.config.xml file which contains a hibernate uh, and mapping details all right let me show you okay so let's create a man project here go to the new then marvin search for marvin here Marvin project next just type group id as net.java guides artifact id as hibernate java config example all right all right so once you are happy with the details just hit finish button so here we go so you can notice here by default uh, java 1.5 uh, is associated with uh, this newly created project so let's go to the class path and let's change from 1.5 to 1.8 let's also change the compiler version from 1.1 1.8 perfect now our project set i have we have done the project setup let's have a look into the next step so next step is we need to create a project directory structure let's create a package and name it as net.javagates.hibernate.model all right let's create a few more packages all right let's create uh, one more package name it as a util all right let's have a look into next step is so next step is we need to add a uh, Marvin dependencies to pom.xml let's open pom.xml and uh, let's create a dependencies dependencies element now inside that let's uh, let's add two dependencies that is mysql connector and uh, hibernate uh, core dependency so these are the two dependencies are end up in order to create a hibernate application uh, you know to connect mysql database so next step is we create a simple jp entity so typically basically we are creating a student jp entity all right uh, let me close these other projects so these projects i have created for my previous video tutorials all right so go to the model package right click new and class which let's name it as a student all right so let's create an instance variables uh, private int id private string post name private string last name private
add string email perfect now let's create a getter settle method so in order to access these private uh, fields here we go all right let's create parameters constructor and let's also create a uh, you know default constructor here we go perfect now we have created a student class with uh, instance variables get a settle methods and constructors let's make this uh, student class as a jp entity uh, let's use at entity annotation in order to make the java class as a uh, jp entity and we use at uh, table annotation in order to provide a table details over here so we provide a table name as a student and let's use at uh, id annotation in order to make this id as primary key and let's also use at uh, generated value annotation in order to provide a primary key generation strategy uh, in this case uh, we use identity all right and let's uh, let's give a column name to these instance variables also let's uh, you know map this columns name with the uh, these private these uh, properties all right so if you don't specify a uh, add column annotation then by default the name of the column is uh, the name of this uh, instance variable all right let's uh, give a proper uh, column names like uh, post and post underscore name last underscore name and uh, here uh, email all right so this is a pretty simple uh, jpa student class so next step is we need to provide a hibernate configuration so uh, we'll be creating programmatically a java based configuration here so go to the util package right click new and create a class and name it as a hibernate util perfect now we define all the database and mapping uh, configuration in this uh, file all right so in my previous video i have shown you how to define a, you know a database and mapping configurations in xml in this case we are programmatically you know writing a java code in order to provide a hibernate configuration so notice here uh, we are specifying uh, you know uh, database details like uh, driver name jdbc warrior username password and hibernate dilate and here we are specifying hibernate properties perfect right and uh, we also you know mapping uh, the jp entities and here we are using uh, service registry in order to build a session factory object so we should uh, maintain a single session factory object and we should use it throughout the application so let's create a student dao class uh, so so basically dao is a data you know a data access object uh, design pattern uh, it says that we need to separate out all the uh, all the database related stuff into a separate file so that we can decouple business logic from the database uh, stuff all right so here i am just de I'm, i you know i am just creating all the database related stuff in a single file that is a student dao and here i am just creating a save student uh, method inside that i am just uh, you know uh, saving a student object into a database so here let's go uh, I'm, I'm just declaring a transaction object and let i am using a try with resource statement in order to create a session object over here so we basically start the transaction and within that transaction we perform our database operations right so in order to start the transaction we need to call begin transaction method on session object and once the transaction is uh, begin then we can save a student object like this and once student object is persisted then we can commit the transition let us say if there are any exception occur in this try state try block then uh, we need to write a catch block and we need to you know a rollback to transaction right so let's implement that step as well so let's create a catch block here and let's add a condition like uh, if transaction object is not null then we can roll back it it's a pretty simple uh, you know steps who you need to follow in order to uh, you know in order to use a hibernate so let's roll back it perfect right
oops we need to assign a transaction object like this right so we are using try with resource statement in order to close a session object automatically so you uh, so if you know you, you probably know that before java 7 uh, the, we need to close the resource using final statement right final block but uh, after java 7 uh, java 7 provides try with resource statement we can use to close the resource automatically so here just create an app class uh, with the main method and we basically test the cyber application standalone that is by using main method let's create a DAO class object and we call a uh, save student method of this DAO class uh, this uh, student DAO class right let's create a student object here and let's give post name as a remesh last name as a further array and email as a remesh at the gmail.com perfect now uh, let's call this save student method and let's pass the student object and let's print a you know id so this is the auto incremented id and we are just printing over here all right all right guys uh, we have we have developed almost the hibernant application now let's uh, run it this application as a standalone so yes our application is uh, working perfectly we don't we don't get any exception over here so you can notice here these are the statements the table you know table is created automatically by hibernate and also record is inserted perfect right so this is how typically we uh, write a uh, java based complication programmatically in a hibernate applications all right all right thanks for watching i will see you in the next video all right so so far we have created two hibernate examples so uh, in the first example i have demonstrated how to create a hibernate application using xml based configuration and in a second example i have shown you how to create a hibernate application using java based configuration all right so now we'll create a hibernate code example all right so basically we, uh, we will see how to create an entity and how to save that entity into a database and how to retrieve that entity from the database and how to update an existing entity into a database and how to delete an entity from the database so we'll we'll create a, you know we'll create a standard hibernate project and we perform all these good operations in the next in the next lesson all right hi there welcome back so in this hibernate code example tutorial we create a hibernate application that performs code operations against mysql database so we'll be using eclipse id in order to create a hibernate application step by step and we use maven as a project management and build tool and we'll be using mysql as a database all right let's go ahead and let's start uh, you know creating a hibernate application so here are the development steps so first we create a simple Maven project in Eclipse ID and we add a packaging structure to it and we add all the jar dependencies to permanent XML and we create a simple JP entity which will map to you know relational table and here we create a hibernate configuration using Java code and we create a student DAO class which will uh, perform code operations we create a main class and we'll test it all right so let's open Eclipse ID uh, go to the file new choose Maven project and and we are creating a simple mind project here just view group id as a net.java guides and artifact id adds hibernate hyphen crew hyphen example so this is our uh, project name and uh, we can provide a name and description for our project so just give a name as a hibernate code example and let's give a description the same so once we are happy with the details just hit finish button all right so here we go so this is a hibernate code example sim maven simple maven project now uh, by default java 1.5 is associated with this project so let's change go to the class path and let's change from 1.5 to 1.8 all right and let's also change uh, java compiler by default it is 1.5 let's let us change it from 1.5 to 
all right perfect now we have configured java 8 all right now we have created simple man project next we will add a project structure all right so right click new package oops new package and your name as net dot java guides dot hibernate dot model so uh, we create a model uh, inside that we basically create a jp entities let's create one more package and name it as a dao and let's create a one more package and let's name it as a util perfect right so we have created packaging structure now let us see next step so next step is uh, we need to add a uh, you know uh, maven dependencies to pom.xml let's go ahead and let's open pom.xml and let's create a dependencies section and here we go so these are the two dependencies we need to add all right so here you can see this is a mysql connector so we are using mysql database so we need to use a mysql and here we are using hibernate core dependency all right perfect so next step is we create a jp entity go to the model package right click new and create a class and name it as a student all right this is a simple student java class now let's create some fields private long id private string post name private string last name and private string email so these are the instance uh, you know, instance variables so let's create a getter setter methods uh, so we have created private fields right so in order to access private fields we need to create a uh, getter setters and hibernate internally uses getter setters in order to you know uh, deals with the uh, proxies so let's create uh, you know a uh, parameterized constructor and also create a default constructor pretty simple right perfect now we have a java class now let's make this java class as a jp entity so we use jp annotations in order to you know make this class as a jp entity class so here is the annotation uh, at entity jp annotation which we use to make this java class as a jp entity perfect right let's use a add table annotation in order to provide our you know uh, table details for example uh, we can give a name table name here like uh, student and we can also specify here like catalog indexes schema unique constraints all right so we can use add table annotation to provide a table details now let's use add id annotation so add id annotation uh, basically we use to you know uh, create a primary key for our table all right so here we use add generated a value annotation in order to provide a primary key generation strategy all right in this uh, in our case we are using auto increment uh, you know uh, primary key generation strategy all right let's use uh, add column annotation in order to give a column name or uh, in order to map column name uh, with uh, you know java property or java fields so here I am giving column name column name for ID as a ID. Let's copy it and let's give column name for post name. Let's give post name underscore name. And similarly for last name also. Let's give last name underscore name. Alright. And also give a column name for email. Perfect. So this is how typically we create a JP entity class which will map to the relational table. Perfect. So next step is we create a Hibernate configuration file. 
so inside hibernate we basically configure you know uh, database uh, details and we create a session factory let's create a hibernate util class so basically uh, we can also you know use uh, uh, xml based compilation but uh, uh, i will be using java based compilation so this is the session factory uh, we are making session factory as a singleton because uh, uh, for each database we need to maintain a single session factory and so here is a configuration class that represents you know bootstrapping the hibernate application so if you want to read more about classes you can just mouse over it and you can read the java doc of it so here are the properties and we are specifying mysql credentials over here like mysql uh, you know uh, url username password hibernate dialect and here are some few of the hibernate properties all right so we are using set properties to setting the properties and here we are you know uh, providing a jp entity classes uh, for mapping and here is the service uh, registry so we pass configuration object to the service registry registry class and here we are building session factory and we are returning session factory it's pretty simple java based configuration nothing fancy so let's create a student dao class which perform code operations against mysql database all right so this is a simple student class we have created now let us list out what are the you know uh, operations or what are the functions we are creating uh, uh, in order to you know perform uh, operations against mysql database so first we create a save student method which will save a student object into a database and we create a get all students we it means we retrieve all the students from database and we create a get student by id method which will retrieve a particular student by id and we create update student method which will update a student and finally we create a delete student it will delete a particular student so these are the five methods we will create i hope you are following the steps right perfect now let's go ahead and let's uh, create these methods so public wide save student so save student is the name of the method and let's pass a student object as a parameter perfect now let's create a uh, we also perform transactions right so hibernate provides uh, you know uh, classes uh, in order to provide a transaction so note here uh, we are using transaction interface of a hibernate package all right so there are also many transaction interfaces exist but uh, make sure that you have use transaction interface of hibernate package so let's create uh, you know uh, let's create a session object here so session factory is basically uh, used to create a session object and here uh, we are using get session factory method on top of that we are also calling open session so once we get a session object then we can call its uh, you know we can we can call its uh, begin transaction method in order to start the transaction so once we start the transaction then we can save a student object uh, within that transaction using session.save method perfect All right notice here we are we are you know storing or we are persisting student object within this particular transaction once you save the student then we can commit the transaction over here so in order to commit the transaction just uh, call the api commit it's a commit method so transaction uh, you know interface or transaction object provides a couple of apis which we can use uh, and we can perform transactions so if there are any exceptions occur in a try block then we can just roll back the transaction perfect right 
so simple steps we need we we start the transaction and we save student object within that transaction and once we save the student we commit the transaction and if we encounter any exceptions in a try block then we can cap can catch we can we can caught that exception and we can roll back the transaction it's pretty simple this is how we can you know save the entity uh, into a database so similarly let's copy this method and let's create update student method perfect so the similar steps we are going to follow in each method right so here uh, instead of save we can call save or update method in order to update a student object into a database so same steps like uh, we we need to you know start the transaction we need to update a student entity we commit the transaction right so let's copy this uh, code and let's uh, you know just change the method name method name as get student by id all right and we pass uh, uh, you know um, parameter as id so notice here we are we are performing similar steps like we get a session object from session factory and we start the transaction and now uh, we get a student object from database table all right so in order to do that uh, we need to declare a student object before a try block because we are returning student object and let's call a get method of a session object in order to get a particular student right. so this is the syntax in order to get a student a student object from a database perfect so here we are returning a student object All right so we need to return a student object let's replace y with a student it's perfect right similar steps we are following uh, and here one more thing is instead of get method we can also use a load method here in order to load a particular object a particular you know object from database So uh, in this video, I'm going to use a get method. All right, so we have performed save student, update student and get student by ID. All right, let's copy this method over, method here and let's name it as a get students. All right, so here uh, we are, you know, returning list of student. So let's give a return type as list of students. And let's change the method name as get all students and uh, no parameters uh, need to pass to this method so let's create a student list of student object here perfect now what we will do uh, we'll create now just uh, think how we can retrieve all the students from database so we use create query method of session object in order to retrieve all the students from table so we use hql syntax over here so use we use a hibernate query language in order to retrieve all the students so notice here the syntax of the query, uh, the hql query is query here is from student so we are not using sql statements over here we are using hibernate query language hibernate query statements perfect right so this is how basically we retrieve all the students object from table let's copy uh, this method and because we are or now we create a delete students api So, so just uh, with similar steps we are going to follow here just call delete method of session object so there are many ways we can uh, you know we can delete a record from a database using session objects so session objects provides a methods like remove and delete so in this example i'm going to show you how to get a particular student from id 
and we will delete that student by using I know uh, delete method so notice here first I retrieve a student object and then we delete that particular student object right so here uh, we, are, we are not returning any I know any type here so similar steps we start the transaction we perform the uh, operation and we commit the transaction and if there are any exceptions then we uh, roll back the transaction let's create a app class and uh, we test this abandoned application so let's create a main method over here and inside that let's create a student object And just fill up the details first name as a Ramesh last name as a Fadatari and email ID as Ramesh at the gmail.com all right so let's change the constructor of student class let's remove this ID field over here because we are uh, you know incrementing uh, primary key in a database table so no need to specify this ID over here so let's create a one more student object so before that uh, uh, let's create a student DAO class and we save this particular student object using save student method all right so let's create a second student So before that uh, we need to test whether the student is successfully persisted in a database or not so in order to do that just call get student by id method and just pass the student you know student id so notice here when we save the student object into a database then you know the id id will be assigned to the student object right so let us test get all students method let's iterate over a list of students and let's print to the console so notice here we are using lambda expressions Uh, student uh, object is already exist. Let's uh, rename it. So what we are doing here, we are uh, testing all the, uh, you know, all the methods that we have implemented in student DAO class. Perfect, right? So I have a given name as a DAO because. Uh, it's a uh, you know data access object design pattern so according to DAO uh, design pattern we need to separate out all the database related um, database related stuff into a separate class so we can separate out all the database operations or database related source code into a separate class so that we can decouple uh, business logic from the database of code all right so just just uh, um, here just I'm giving the comments uh, so that uh, you know so here like we are testing save student and here we are testing get testing get student by ID and one more thing is uh, here let me update student here so here we are updating student it's perfect right so notice here I have given a comment so that uh, it is uh, the it should be readable right perfect this is how we are testing all the you know all the methods of student DAO class so here we are testing student save student update student get student by ID get all the students and delete student perfect now let's run this hibernate application and let's see whether 
this applications work properly perfect so we we, do, we haven't get any exceptions over here just uh, uh, just uh, let's uh, let us have a look into the console statements so here you can see we are uh, here hibernate is creating a student object and you know hibernate is also updating a student object so before that it will insert a records update a record select a student by particular id and also delete a record perfect so our application is working all right so here you can see we are testing all the uh, you know student DAO class methods and this is student DAO class what we can do we can separate we can create an interface of this student DAO class just right click on class refactor and just name you know interface as I student DAO and we can extract all these methods into a separate interface perfect so here is I student DAO interface so typically in uh, you know enterprise applications uh, we basically uh, create an interface and we, we create a class in order to implement uh, interface methods perfect right so this is how you can use a standard whenever you create a hibernate applications all right so i have created three examples so in a first example i have demonstrated you how to create a hibernate application using xml configuration and in a second example i have demonstrated you how to create a hibernate application using java based configuration and in a third example, how to create a hibernate code, up, code example which performs code operations against uh, you know MySQL database. Now I will create a fourth example. All right. So we create a JSP server at hibernate code example, and I would like to demonstrate how to use hibernate framework in actual uh, web application. All right. So we create a user management web application using JSP server and hibernate. All right, and we use MySQL as a database. All right, All right guys, let's go ahead and let's uh, you know create this example. So basically, we will develop a simple you know user management web application with these features: create user, update user, delete user, retrieve user, and list up users. And here you can see these are the screenshots. Uh, and this is uh, you know nice uh, add new user edit user delete user and this table you know list of the list of users let's have a look into what are tools and technologies that we'll be using we'll be using gsp 2.2 hibernate 5 plus we'll be using you know uh, eclipse or uh, we can use a sts or eclipse sts is just you know spring tools but uh, uh it, is, it is just a eclipse with the uh, it has a uh, you know a uh, spring uh, plugin and we use jdk 1.8 and we use tomcat server 8.5 we use gstl uh, in a gsp pages and we use servlet api and we use mysql database all right so let's have a look into the development steps that we are going to follow in order to create this uh, web application so first we create a eclipse dynamic web project and we add all the required dependencies to it and we create a project structure and we create an MySQL database setup when we create a simple user entity and we provide a hibernate JavaScript configurations and we pro, you know create a user DAO class and then we create a user server to handle uh, you know HTTP request and we create a view layer uh, that is user list.jsp page and user form jsp page and we handle the error pages and finally we deploy and test the application all right guys let's go and let's uh, you know start implementing these steps step by step so the first step is we need to create a Eclipse Dynamic Web Project. So let's go ahead and let's open the Eclipse and let's start coding. All right. So here I'm in Eclipse ID. Let me close uh, the existing. All right. So in Eclipse, go to the file, new, and choose Dynamic Web Project, and just give name as JSP Servlet. So Hibernate MySQL code example. Alright, and uh, 
that's all you need to do hit finish button all right so here we go the project is created and you can observe here by default the project is associated with uh, gdk gdk version 1.5 let's change it let's go to the build path and let's change it um, yeah it is uh, you know it has already gdk 1.8 so let's check the java compiler yeah it's also configured with 1.8 all right so now uh, let's have a look into the next step so next step is we need to add the required dependence so you can find uh, the required dependencies from my github repository so already i hosted source code abyss tutorial on my github repository let me show you so at the end of the tutorial i have given a link here so right click and open a new tab and go to the web content folder under web panel folder under link folder so here are the dependencies so you need to download uh, these, these jar files and you need to keep all the jar files in a under lib folder all right all right so uh, i just copied from my existing project and i just pasted and pasted in a lib folder over here all right let's have a look into the next step the next step is uh, we need to set up a project structure all right so you can refer the screenshot here i have given a screenshot here all right so according to the screenshot you can create a project structure all right so project structure means packaging structure over here so we'll create a DAO package model package util package and web package all right let's switch to the clips and right click on src folder go to package and just you package name is net.java guides dot type user management because we are developing user management application dot give package name as a DAO under DAO package we can create a DAO classes which has you know JDBC code or database related stuff let's give package as a model right let's create one more package and uh, oops right click new and let's give as web inside a web uh, package we create a servlets let's create one more package and let's name it as uh, util under util package we create a hibernate util class all right so that is the project structure let's have a look into the next step okay, so next step is we need to set up a database so create a I know demo demo database under demo database uh, just to execute this DDL script. Alright. So here I have opened uh, my MySQL workbench in my in my machine. So let me create a database. Create a database and uh, name database as a demo. Let's execute this statement. Then refresh here yeah here we go the demo database created and under the demo database we create a detail script right so let's copy this detail script that is a user table and just uh, select this demo or demo database and just execute this this uh, statement uh, yeah here we go refresh it and under tables you can find this is a user table all right now we have done a mysql database setup now let's have a look into the next step so next step is we need to create a jp entity so let's go switch to the eclipse again and uh, right click on model package new class user so instead of uh, writing line by line code let's just reuse the code so that uh, uh, you know uh, uh, we can you know uh, reduce the time so i will just reuse the code and i will explain the code already Alright, so this is the user uh, GP entity class. The user entity uh, class it has a user table. So even though we have you know uh, we have created a user table, but uh, Hibernate also create automatically create this table. Alright, so basically we no need to manually create the table. 
but sometime we need to manually create the table but uh, that is uh, that is that is a case whenever we develop uh, big applications but in our uh, application we can also create these applications using hibernate properties with uh, time being let's keep uh, uh, keep uh, these details as it is all right so this is a simple uh, user jp entity class it is annotated with the jp annotations so at entity annotation it is used to mark this class as a jp entity and we use at jp at table annotation in order to provide a table details and in, in our case table it is like table name is a user and we can also provide a schema name and any constraints and here we are we are using at id annotation in order to provide a primary key and add, gen add generated value annotation we can use to provide you know a primary key generation strategy in our case we are using identity and here we are using add column annotation in order to provide a column name to these fields so it will basically map a column name to these fields all right so if you don't specify column annotation then it will you know by default it will take a name of this fields all right so let's go ahead and let's uh, have a look into the next step. So next step is we need to create a Hibernate configuration file. So we are using Java's configuration. So let's uh, create a Hibernate util class. So under util package, right click, new, and choose class, and type Hibernate util class, util name as a class, just to use this code. All right, so let me explain this code. This is a pretty simple hibernate configuration. All right, so here notice that here we are using session factory object. So session factory is as you know uh, uh, is a uh, you know it provides a factory of session objects. So session object we can use and we can interact with the database. And we need to maintain only one session factory object throughout the application if we are using a single database. So if you are using multiple databases, you can you can maintain as multiple session factories. All right. So in our example, we are maintaining a single database. So we are using sing, single session factory object, and we are you know making this single session or factory object as a single term. Notice here we are using configuration object. So the configuration object uh, here we need to provide you know the Hibernate properties. We need to set Hibernate properties to this configuration class class object. So notice here we are, uh, uh, you know, we are setting up the properties, uh, properties like driver name, JDBC URL, username, password, and have a dialect. And here a few, a few of the properties like uh, show SQL, DDL, uh, you know, SBM to DDL auto. So these are the properties we need to set up uh, to the hybrid configuration. And notice here we are uh, using add annotated class method in order to you know map this class so uh, just notice here this is the user class we need to we need to add to the configuration object and here we are using service registry so basically we need to provide a properties to the service registry you know object by using apply apply settings method and we can use and then we can use a configuration object to build the system factory and we need to pass the service registry to the build session factory method and it will return a session factory object but pretty simple configuration all right so let's have a look into the next step so next step is we need to create a user DAO class so under DAO package right click new class user DAO just reuse this code So if you are new to the Hibernate, then I highly, highly, I highly recommend you to visit my previous Hibernate videos where I have explained you the Hibernate basics and uh, how to create a you know, Hibernate code operations, etc. Alright, this is simple user DAO class and uh, it contains a save user, update user, delete user, get user and get all user methods and uh, let us have a look into the you know each method here the so save user uh, method is basically you know save a user entity into a database so look at here we are using try with resource statement in order to close the session object automatically all right so we need to close the session whenever we you know whenever we complete our operation then we need to close the session but here we are using try with resource statement so we do need to manually call session.close method so it will automatically take care 
all right so here we need to start the transaction uh, using begin transaction then we can save the database within this transaction and we can commit the transaction and if there are any exception occur in this type block then we can cut that exception and we can roll back the transaction all right so this is a simple flow similarly for update user we need to start the transaction using begin transaction method of session object and then we can update the user within that transaction and can, well, then we can commit the transaction if there are any exception within this type block then we can roll back the roll back the transaction in the catch block. Similarly, for delete user, uh, delete user method has you know ID as a parameter, and here we are again starting the transaction using session object. Same steps we are you know we are repeating over here. So in case of delete user, we need to first get the user object from the database using get method, and we are deleting user object using delete method, and we finally commit the transaction. Similarly for get get user, we start the transaction, we get the user by using get method, we commit the transaction and we return the user. Get all users uh, method, inside that uh, we list out all the users. So here notice that here we are using HQL, that is a Hibernate query language, in order to fetch all the users from the database. It's pretty simple user out class. So next step is we need to create a user service class, so under webinar folder create this class let's reuse this code Alright, so this is a user servlet, uh, I know, uh, user servlet class, it extends HTTP servlet and this user servlet class, uh, it is a servlet, basically it will handle, I know, HTTP get and post request. Notice here we are using add web servlet annotation in order to map a servlet, uh, in order to map a request to the servlet. So we are not using web.xml or dis deployment descriptor to, you know, to configure a servlet here we are using at uh, you know we have servlet annotation in order to map the servlet all right so this this servlet will handle all the requests from the user right and here we are creating a user DAO object inside a init method so init method is a lifecycle method of a servlet so this method will be called only once during the you know initialization of this servlet so we can create this object only once notice that this is do post and do, do get method so inside a do post method we are again calling a do get method so whenever request comes to the do post method it internally calls a do get method and we are handling all the requests in a do do get method itself itself so we first get the action from the request using get servlet path and this action we are mapping in a switch statement so if action is new then it will go to the show new form and inside show new form we are just forwarding the request to the user form dot gsp page so we are using request dispatcher in order to dispatch this request to the this uh, gsp page and if action is insert then it will internally call insert user in order to insert a, a data into database and in case of delete it will call a delete user in order to delete a user from the database and in case of edit it will just call this uh, you know method in order to navigate you know navigate to the edit form page and in case of update it will call the update user uh, you know method and it internally updates the uh, user object and in case of default we are just navigating to the list of user page here pretty simple servlet so let's have a look into the next so next we need to create a user list dot js page So right click on your content and choose gsp page name is a user list or gsp page let's copy this content so notice here uh, uh, this is this, this, it has a simple table html table inside that this is a for each loop 
Yeah, so it uses JSTL tags in order to loop over a list of user object and here it will just display the list of users and here you can see edit and delete actions so a user can edit a particular user and you can also delete a particular user all right pretty simple user list page let's create a user from the list page in order to submit a user data right click new let's reuse this code so this form basically does two things one is to add the user data and another is edit the user data so based on the user object it will update the user or it will insert the user all right it's pretty simple you know uh, form through which we can submit the user data all right and that is what the development steps we have done uh, so one more step is remaining is uh, we need to create a error .js page. So if there are any exceptions occur at the backend, then that that exception we can you know we can populate in this page. Pretty simple error page. It just displays a exception message, and we need to provide this attribute in order to in order to indicate this JSP page as an error page. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and let's deploy this application and we'll see the demo. Alright, let's deploy this you know Tomcat server. So run as run on server. So I, uh, I have already configured Tomcat server in my Eclipse machine, Eclipse ID. So next. And uh, Finish. So let's wait for a moment. All right, let's open the browser and let's test this from the browser. So in a Chrome browser, open the new tab and just uh, enter this URL. And let's add a new user, user here. So let me add a uh, image for three, email ID as a image 24, at the rate email.com, country as India, it's server time, so here we go. The record is added to the table. So let me add a few more records. Let's add John. Sina at the red gmail.com in uh, country as a US. Let's add one more record Tony Stark, Tony at the red gmail.com, country as a US. All right, let's go ahead and let's edit the user. I update username, I'll just keep as a rubbish and I will just uh, you know remove user email as I just name it as a RAM, save it, and here we go. You know the record is updated right and we can delete the record perfect so this is how we can you know edit we can add we can edit and we can uh, delete and we can list out the users that's great right so this is how typically we create a you know user a web application using gsp solid and hibernate the source code of this tutorial i have already hosted on my github repository so you can just go through it so if uh, if you encounter any you know if you encounter any exceptions or errors during development of this tutorial then let me know or you can just clone the source code from my github repository and just you can report the code all right so let me know if you have any questions in the comment section so i'll be happy to answer you all right thanks for watching i will see you in the next video